there's, there's a lot to read in this judgment, which you haven't got yet. Uh, Lord Justice Newbo has just skillfully uh, given you uh, seven individual judgments uh, in five minutes. Uh, there's a disagreement between the uh, Supremes as to the extent by which uh, Doug wins. But it's a win for Doug, and it's a win for all of you who now know when you're getting on a bus, you can have an expectation that you will be allowed the right to ride. Not a question as to every morning, whether you, every, every time you get on that bus, whether or not you're going to be turned away. Um, it's a significant cultural change which Doug has delivered uh, for, for everybody, and we should be massively grateful to Doug for that. It's not uh, just me. It's uh, loads of people have. The, the, the extent of the disagreement is interesting because um, there are three of the Supremes who would have gone as far as Recorder Isaacs did at the very beginning, which was to say that um, the policy should, be, should go as far as removing people from the bus who fail to comply. Um, that was actually never anything that Doug had asked us to campaign on. Uh, mm -hmm. All we needed was the, the right to travel. Uh, and instead of the request and retreat policy, which bus companies mm -hmm. have been operating, which is the driver can request, but after that doesn't have to do anything else, now it is a request and require. Mm -hmm. Unless that bus is full, drivers now have to make sure that other passengers move if they're required to do so for a wheelchair user. Um, what this means what this means is two things. Firstly, if you're on a bus today, tomorrow, um, and you can't, you can't access that space because the driver won't require a folding wheelchair to, to move, uh, then you can take action to enforce those rights. That's what Doug's done. That means that the, driver, the company will be asked and instructed to change their policy, um, train drivers to the new standard, to the Pauli principle. <laughs> Which, is, Which is that you now have a priority right of access over that space. That is the Pauli principle as far as we're concerned. Uh, and you know there will be damages which will flow from that for companies that fail to comply. So the first thing is you have rights that you can enforce. And I suggest that you do that. You will need to prove you are where you say you were. Uh, CCTV footage often goes missing. Um, but, you know, uh, the team at Transport for All, who've clearly been very uh, instrumental in this, will, will be able to give you guidance as to what you do on a practical level. And the second is, um, Parliament has a role and it has the opportunity to develop rights now. Um, thanks to Baroness Brinton, who, who's with us today and, and, and is championing this case through Westminster and Parliament. Clearly, there's a narrative in the judgment which basically says that if um, Parliament uh, goes a bit further and refreshes the uh, access regulations to make it explicit that drivers do have that statutory power to remove somebody for failing to, failing to vacate the space, uh, then there's a lot more that we could do. There'll be, a, there'll be further progress to be made on this. Um, so we know that uh, Parliament's interested in this case. Uh, various of us have spoken at Westminster about it, mm. and various advocates have been doing so on our behalf. Mm. Uh, there's a bit more to do, but we're obviously very delighted uh, for Doug and uh, that we've been able to deliver that change, with, which has a real meaning to all of you. Thank you. Mm. Three cheers for Doug and Unity Law. Let's go. 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 Let's go.